Hello, I'm Dr. Gunam, Dr. Gunamni Rafa, Assistant Professor, Department of Anatomy, Diffu Medial College. We are now going to make one video for undergraduate student, along with Dr. Baneser Broser. He is Dr. Baneser Broser. Uh, Dr. Baneser Broser made this oldest models with his own hand. These are all handmade models. And today we are going to see about the, actually Dr. Baneser Barossa, he is associate professor from this college of the anatomy department. And today he is going to see about the development of cardiovascular system. So we are going to see step by step with a small, small video. So try to follow all this video, only small, small video, okay? So this is the blastosis. This upper one is the amniotic cavity and this lower one is the secondary walk sac. In between this uh, amniotic cavity and uh, secondary walk sac, this is the preliminary zamnix. Preliminary zamnix, cranial side, caudal side, and this blue one is called ectoderm. <coughs> so these two areas, one is cranial, one is caudal. This this area is this area is called oropharyngeal membrane as per the Langman. And this one is called anal membrane. Actually, okay. actually this, this is looking like foramen. Yeah, in no, this, model. this is not actually foramen. It will, it will make foramen. Uh, this this cranial area, this midline cranial area is called oropharyngeal membrane. This is the tight adherence, tight adherence between okay. the ectoderm and endoderm. This blue one okay. is the ectoderm, and this yellow one is the endoderm. Yes. So in the midline. In the midline, cranially oropharyngeal membrane, caudally cloacal membrane. Uh, the, uh, at the stage of four week of development, this oropharyngeal membrane will be the fusor mouth, and seven week of <coughs> intrauterine life, this cloacal membrane will be the fusor anal canal. So, this one actually picture in the Langman which one? In Langman. Uh, Okay, this is, this, the is the, this is the superior view of this trilaminar zamdix and this is the cross section of this trilaminar zamdix. So here this is the cloacal membrane, caudally and cranially this is the oropharyngeal membrane. So here you see now we are removing the, we are removing the ectoderm. This re ectoderm is removed, now this is the neural tube. This okay, this one is? Neural tube. This, 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 this one neural tube. Neural this, tube. One, this, one. Uh, this one is neural tube. Okay. And just just removing, underneath this removing one. Removing this neural tube, this is the total intra intraembryonic mesoderm. Intraembryonic. Okay. So in the midline, this is called notochord. Notochord lateral to this notochord, this is the paraxial mesoderm, which will be converted to somites. And lateral to this paraxial mesoderm, this is the intermediate mesoderm. And lateral to this inter uh, intermediate mesoderm, this is the lateral plate mesoderm. So this lateral plate mesoderm is horseshoe shaped. Yes, this cranially, one is horseshoe shaped. Cranially, it is continuous with the opposite sided lateral plate. Right side is continuous uh, with the left, left side. side. Okay. Just cranial to this oropharyngeal membrane. Just cranial, cranial to this oropharyngeal membrane. This is the continuation of the lateral plate mesoderm. So within the lateral plate mesoderm, there will be a formation of cavity. This cavity is called intraembryonic silom. In this diagram, you'll see this is the intraembryonic cavity or intraembryonic silom. That Can you focus it? Can you yeah, focus yeah, it? Yeah, yes. Yeah. This cavity, this cavity is called intraembryonic cavity or intraembryonic silom. So this, that this one, huh. green is clear. Yes. In this, so this, in, in this is this is the cavity. Within the lateral plate mesoderm, within the lateral plate mesoderm, this is the cavity, intraembryonic silom. It is continuous with the opposite half. This so, one is inside uh, the yes. lateral plate. Yes, yeah, yeah. inside the lateral plate mesoderm. Okay. Now this cavity is separating this lateral plate mesoderm into somatopleuric and splanchopleuric. The here in this diagram, this yes. this above this cavity, this is the somatopleuric, okay. and below this cavity, this is the splanchopleuric, intraembryonic mesoderm. Can you see it? Can you focus it? Okay. Yes. Which one, which one? Again? Yeah, this is. This is the splenchopleuric. 
again uh, yeah yeah and this is the cavity intramuronic cavity or intramuronic silom this okay. cavity yes and above this cavity this is the somatopleuric intramuronic mesoderm somatopleuric this and orange this, color uh, yeah yellow uh, uh, or, orange or, or yellow color okay. okay below this cavity this is this plancopleuric yes okay so medially they are continuous to each other continuous with the, you see in just this, this one is this cavity, cavity no this yes. is the cavity intramuronic silom so this cavity is separating this lateral plate mesoderm into somatopleuric and splenchopleuric. Yes. Okay. So medially, medially they are continuous, continuous. to each other. Continuous. Medially. Okay. Okay. Yes. So now you, this this cavity, this cavity will continue with the opposite other side. Other side. Uh, okay. So this midline cavity part is called fusar fusar pericardial cavity. This one. Okay. This midline cavity will be the fusar pericardial cavity, and this posterior lateral part of yes. this intramuronic silom will, will fuse with the opposite half at the end of lateral folding. At the, at the, at the, at the end of the lateral folding, at the ed, end of this lateral folding, this intramuronic silom will fuse with the opposite half forming the, forming the peritoneal cavity. Okay. This, this posterior lateral half of this intramuronic silom. Yes. Okay. okay. Now you see this connecting part. This connecting part of this intramuronic silom, cranially it is connecting the pericardial cavity and caudally it is connecting the peritoneal cavity. So it is it will be it will be known as pericardio peritoneal canal. So this pericardio peritoneal canal will be the fusar pleural cavity. Yes. Okay. No now come to this now come to this diagram. This is the primary heart field. Can you see this horseshoe separate primary heart field? These are reddish so, color. Yes, red red. red red island type. So this primary heart field is a horseshoe separate. Yeah, it's yes. a horseshoe separate. In in between the splenchopleuric and endoderm. In between the splenchopleuric and endoderm. Endoderm. So this is called primary heart field. So here you see three tubes, three three structure, three tubes. Huh? Yes. Can you see yeah. the both sides? Yeah, yeah. So this is called primary heart field. So this primary heart field will going to develop as a dorsal aorta medially and endocardial tube laterally. Mm. Yes. You understand? Yeah. yeah. So this primary heart field, which is again known as a angiogenic cell cluster. You see, the angiogenic cell cluster. These are radius color, actually, yeah, radius color. Yeah. Angiogenic cell cluster will be developing this dorsal aorta medially and endocardial tubes laterally. Okay? Yeah. So, finally, at the end of the lateral folding, these endocardial tubes, right and left of, the, of this endocardial tube, will fuse together to form the endocardial tube. Can you see? Yeah. This is the, at the end of the lateral folding, two right and left sided. Endocardial tubes will fuse together to form the endocardial tube. Fuse yeah. fusar heart tube. This one. Uh, mm. Heart tube. Okay. But that means both these two, yes. they will right join. And left they will join. Join. Join and forms this one. Yes. Forms this one. Fuse endocardial heart tube. Okay. Yes. Sir? Now come to this. Now come to this diagram. So this is the fusion of this right and left sided heart endocardial tubes. Endocardial. So tube. here you see, this is the fused heart tube. So after fusion. These are the four parts, four basic parts, bulbous cordis, ventricle, atrium, and sinus venosa. These are four parts. Four parts. So here I have made a mnemonic. This is called Vivas. Yes. This is Vivas. Vivas means actually uh, the original um, abbreviation of this Vivas is the Birmingham Hasculitis Activity, Activity Score. score actually. Okay. It is the international abbreviation. Okay. okay. So Vivas means uh, bulbous cordis, the ventricle, atrium, and Sinus venosus. So this is the direction of this is the direction of fusion. Fusion. Fusion of the. That means heart first one first fusion one, occurs in the bulbous cordis, then ventricle, then atrium, then sinus venosus. This is the direction of the fusion. But the direction of the blood flow is opposite. The first of all, the venous blood yes. enters through the sinus venosus, then atrium, then ventricle, then bulbous cordis. Okay. okay. Now come to this model. Mm. Yes. So this is the uh, fused heart tube. Yes. Huh? Fused yes. heart tube making a loop. Loop. 
making a loop. This is called looping of the heart tube, okay. or this is called folding of the heart tube. So this folding, this folding is due to the growth of this heart tube, due to dilatation, secu whatever it is, circulation, dilatation, lengthening. Uh, this growth, grown heart tube within a limited pericardial cavity. Can you focus it here? Uh, this is the fused heart tube, bivas. So within a small or limited pericardial cavity, the growing heart tube is to be accommodated, making a loop. Yes. Making a loop. Okay. Making now this is the anatomical position. This, anato this is the anatomical position. That means uh, when you hold this one, yeah, yeah. You, you have to. We have to hold. Side. This is the anterior side. Okay. Anterior side, and this is the posterior side. Yes. Right side and left side. So yes. anteriorly, this is called original bulbous cordis. This is the first bulbous cordis part. Okay, bulbous cordis. Then V, V for ventricle. This is ventricle. Okay. Then this is atrium. Okay. This is atrium, and this is the sinus venosus. This blue blue color structure. This is called sinus venosus. This is sinus venosus. Okay. Sinus venosus. Can you see? Yeah. Sinus venosus. So this is called looping, looping. or folding of the heart. Okay. Okay. So now we we'll see this is the constricted part. This is the constricted part between the ventricle and atrium. This is the constricted part. So if we go to see this constricted part internally, I will see internally. This is the constricted part. So yes. this is the primitive atrioventricular canal. This is primitive atrioventricular canal. Yes. So in this primitive atrioventricular canal, this is the anterior side and this is the posterior side. Yes. So anteriorly and posteriorly there will be two swelling that is called cushion. So this is called atrioventricular cushion or AV cushion. So okay. there will be two swelling. Anteriorly and posteriorly there will be two swelling. So these two swelling are called AV cushion. Okay. Atrioventricular cushion. cushion. Atrioventricular cushion. That means it lies in uh, in between the at fuser, atrium. Yeah, yeah, it is it is in the common atrioventricular canal. Good. So this in this common atrioventricular canal, these two fusion will fuse together. Yes. This, uh, these two swellings will fuse together. Now this fused evicution will uh, will separate will separate the common atrioventricular canal. This is the common atrioventricular yes, canal. Yes. This common atrioventricular canal will be separated by this fused evicution into right and left atrioventricular canal. Okay? Yes. So it is also known as yes, yes. septum intermedium. It is also known as okay. septum intermedium we are, we are as part of We are now going to close this one. Next, next part again. Follow this one, our next video. Mm -hmm.